All right, today on the show, we are going to be talking about oversharing. Mm. Selena, is it possible for a husband to overshare with his wife? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, there you go. There's the episode. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> yeah, in other words, is it ever appropriate, in other, it, for example, is it biblical to not share something with your spouse? Is it ever okay to withhold truth while not withholding the gravity of the situation? To withhold the details of the situation for the health and the edification of your hmm. marriage. Yeah. So in contrast to la- last week, we talked about over-communicating, mm-hmm. which has to do more with careless quantities of words. <laughs> Today, we're talking about careless content of your words or over-sharing. Are we sharing things that are inappropriate to be mm-hmm. sh- shared given the time, the timing of sharing them and also maybe the content of what we're sharing? So the root of this conversation has to do with honesty. So we're going to look at honesty. We're going to look at scripture. It's going to be an interesting one, and we will see you on the other side. So just right out of the gate, a little warning here. We are going to be talking about uh, some more adult content. So if there are young ears around, you may want to turn it off the speaker uh, and either pop in your mm-hmm. headphones or just do it. At, listen to it another time. But this is kind of our upfront warning. Yeah. Some sensitive uh, topics will be discussed on this episode. Speaking of adult content, the viewers <laughs> of this episode get the get to lay their eyes on this wonderful hat. I, I just got back today from a board meeting. So I sit on the board for a nonprofit called Flint and Iron, and it's good friends of ours, Nathan and Anna Sutherland. Mm-hmm. And uh, you got to check it out. They have a, one of the main endeavors of Flint and Iron. So he does uh, talks all around really the country. Mm-hmm. Um, for schools and for churches and for communities, and they're around for youth, but specifically around tech. So he has a podcast. He didn't ask me to do this. I just want to do it because oh, he gave me this fancy hat. For youth, but it's also equipping parents. Yes, and that's why I say adult content, because it's for parents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's called the Gospel Tech Podcast. If you've ever wondered, how do we navigate this tricky world of technology and how quickly it's evolving? How do we keep our hearts oriented on Christ, mm-hmm. centered on the gospel, and how do we instruct our children in those truths? So we do hope to have Nathan, at least, maybe even Nathan and Anna, on the podcast, on the parenting side at some point. But anyway, if you're watching, you can see that hat. Check out uh, the Gospel Tech Podcast. Just look for that wherever you get yours, all right? <laughs> so that'll be our announcements for today. We'll do the other stuff at the end. All right. Okay, so today's com- conversation is in the context of communication mistakes. Yes. Right? So we've talked about maybe, uh, what, passive what it, what it what it's like ha- how to love maybe a passive spouse somebody mm. who kind of refuses to engage. Mm-hmm. Um, we just released an episode on uh, over communication, <laughs> just talking too much, wearing each other out. Is that possible? If you didn't listen to that, check that one out. It's uh, very possible. <laughs> <laughs> and today, it's oversharing. So, like Selena said, this is going to be a little bit more of a. Um, I think a heavier topic given the, the the subject matter. Right, which we didn't. I didn't anticipate that to happen, but mm-hmm. as we kept doing our research, it became evident that uh, typically oversharing is a bit of a mistake when it comes to talking about past sin, talking about past relationships, um, things of that nature. So we're going to get into that in a minute. But What happens is you get people that will say, I'm just being honest. Right. You know, I'm just telling you how it is. Well, yeah. and we're the transparency like, yes, we want <laughs> yeah. transparency in marriage. It's good yeah. to know what's going on, right, in your spouse's heart and their mind. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting conversation, but it has yeah. it has context. It has, you know, we're starting with the scriptures. And One funny example that you brought up was uh, like a couple, you were you're doing some research on it, and you said a couple, they said, yeah, before I met so-and-so, you know, I used to think he was what? I used to think he was maybe not so attractive, but his friend at work was super attractive. I'm just being honest, like from the beginning of the relationship, you know, that kind of Yeah, and that's kind of, conversation. That's kind of funny to talk about. And I think that more speaks to having a filter for like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yes, okay, you could overshare that. You could also share that same fact in a way that's not quite as abrasive. But I think that that fact But does itself, it even really need to be shared is the it question, need to be shared, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you need to get it off your chest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Find the appropriate party to yes, say it to, but, but I don't even think you should say it. say it because it's it's diminishing to your spouse if that's who you're it talking could be. about. It could be, yeah. or it could be funny. I don't know. It just depends. <laughs> depends on how. But there <laughs> Lots are some of things, things could be funny, but <laughs> <laughs> and the point I'm trying to make here is there are some things that I think are there's no really redeeming way right. to go about expressing right. that those things. Now the big question, the elephant in the room, is do those things uh, should they be expressed, and is it healthy to then hmm. to suppress them? And if I do need to express something, say, 
we'll get into some of the darker instances of this. Uh, where is the appropriate avenue to do that? If, what do you mean appropriate avenue? So when, so how, like with the counselor who? versus yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. And and what's yeah, in what scenario with whom mm-hmm. is it is it good to share that with? So let's start with our foundation. Of course, it's going to be scripture. And so the first big question is, why do we even need to be honest with each other? Like that might sound silly, but we do have a scriptural precedent for that. Why do we need to be as Christians living in the light, not just saying, okay, I'm over my sin. I'm just going to move on from it. No, we never do, but yes. But there's a confession that needs Mm -hmm. to happen as as a command. And this comes from 1 John. You've heard us say it dozens of times. It is that we walk in the light as Mm -hmm. he is in the light so that, okay, and these are the two reasons, the two bases, 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 (laughs) bases for uh, for sharing are going to be this, being known. We walk in the light so that we might have fellowship with one another is what Mm -hmm. 1 John says. And the second one is we might be made holy. First John words it like this: says we might be cleansed from our unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that is kind of the the underlying reason for okay, why do we even worry about how to confess sin and to what level? Um, but then you think, okay, we're married. Of course, we need to share everything, right? We're all about transparency. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> the two became one flesh, right? And in, in Mark, uh, is it Mark ten nine? Says that where God has brought together, let man mm-hmm. not separate. That includes us. Let us not separate. In any way, yeah. any aspect of our kind of shared consciousness, mm-hmm. not, that's, that's silly to say it that way, but our shared lives, mm-hmm. um, may you know what's in my head and may I know what's in your head at all times. Um, 1 Peter 3.10 um, says it like this, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. This is the important part. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So Peter is there saying they must seek peace, and they must pursue peace. Okay, what's interesting with that, uh, we're actually getting into another passage. I think it comes from uh, 2 Peter. Uh, No, it comes from Philippians later on. So that, that passage itself compels us to then say, okay, I lack peace in this area. And I think there are instances where there might be something long gone and mm-hmm. we've, we've shared that on the on our on this podcast where i've said that came out of nowhere mm-hmm. like pre-teens and I, all of a sudden i just feel like i need to share it with my wife so that she can she can know me and i wrestled with that for weeks mm-hmm. until finally god was like today's a day yeah and, and i think it's i think god's faithful i think it's good to wrestle with something and not again you don't just need to overshare and whatever you're thinking just blurt out and whatever you're feeling just comes out like that's not wisdom we see that all throughout scripture um but the turning from evil and doing good and seeking peace and pursuing it like it first begins with repentance of acknowledging yeah. okay yes this was a sin yes um maybe you have repented of it in the past and, and you're struggling with it again and mm-hmm. so how do you bring it to your spouse do you bring it to your spouse um and why why do we bring it to our spouse it's good and that's the topic of today yeah but first let's talk about this dynamic privacy versus secrets okay we've talked about the home the the phone drop test Mm -hmm. right should i have any do i have a right to privacy from my spouse (laughs) that one got some pushback (laughs) i'll tell you what because a lot of people really like their privacy and we're here to say like uh, okay maybe not in this area not in your marriage uh so here's let's talk about privacy and secrets so in general this is outside of marriage so in general as a individual or as a couple Mm -hmm. We might say that we want privacy for our own health. So, for example, if we're dealing with something that's difficult, right. health challenge, maybe something within you know our extended family, within our nuclear home, with one of the kids, we yeah, might ask I mean, for privacy from the general public. Right. Um, I'm not saying that we would hide from Christian community, but right. like seeing how like we don't always share like we share a lot of our lives with with you guys, <laughs> with listeners, viewers. We don't share everything with you. Yeah. Because there's a I think a healthy sense of privacy. Um, or if there's a couple that's working through like an affair, like you don't, you're not going to show up at your church the weekend after you found out about an affair and start announcing it. Guess what, you know, so-and-so right, did right. and guess what we did and guess my... You would, well, you it would, is interesting though. We do see that more like public display on social media of people, mm-hmm. you know, sharing the raw and the real and I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a healthy thing, right? That I would categorize that as probably oversharing, possibly in that moment. I mean, yes, it visually gives us an example that yes, nobody's perfect and everybody's going to have these mm-hmm. hard and difficult and raw moments. But is do we need to share it and why? Again, it goes to that question mm-hmm. of why. Is it is it a 
form of repentance? Is it a way of us seeking peace? Is it a way of us pursuing peace or rebuilding? Or hmm. is it a way of getting attention? Yeah. Which, unfortunately, online, you just mentioned that example, tends to be the case. Right. If you're broadcasting something of this nature, it's for the attention. I mean, by nature of what you're doing, right. it's for it's, the attention. Yes. It could be for edification of others. And yes. So you have it's to discern through a, that. Yeah. Okay, so again, in general, that's privacy. In general, secrets would be things that are for non-health-related reasons. And you're hiding things for non-health-related so reasons. Not, yeah, not in So either your you're marriage. ashamed of them. You know, if I have a secret habit that I don't want you to know about or I don't want other people to know about, I'm going to kind of engage in that habit outside of the public square, so mm-hmm. to speak, because I'm ashamed of it. I want to enable something in you, right? Like, say you have an addiction that you don't want people to talk about. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to enable that by keeping it a secret, so on and so forth, or so I can continue sinning without being called out. Um, so that would be in general. Now, yeah. in marriage, privacy and secrets would look more like this. I don't really think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, privacy doesn't really have a place in marriage. And that's that's the bold yeah, claim don't... that I want to make without having uh, like a verse that says, thou shalt not have anything in private from your spouse, right? right. Um, right. I feel like the verses we laid out ahead of time kind of give us the attitude of a marriage, which is everything is shared. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the one example I could think of was if I maybe have a vocational restriction, right? We have a friend, uh, our friends, uh, one of the, the husband was in the CIA, right? And he just was bound by government <laughs> law to <laughs> mm-hmm. not share secrets with his family. Um, or if you have um, a spouse who's a doctor and they just are bound by ethics yeah. to not mm-hmm. share details of their patients. And right. that, you know, why would that be healthy? Or a pastor. Like, why would a, a pastor shouldn't be coming home talking to his his family, his spouse, about things that are done within the confidence of counseling, Right. I feel like that's you're looking at me like I'm. Well, I that's where the place where I'm like, how much does a pastor share? Because if if he is looking for support in that role, um, that's where I would say the pastor would go to his board of elders, and he would go to other pastors. Sure. And he would say, I'm dealing with this really difficult case. But what about the covenant of the husband and wife? Wife, Just ask I need for you prayer. to know without details that I'm dealing with a really difficult case right now with somebody from our body of believers. Sure. Okay. And the nature of it's just X, Y, and Z. I can't tell you any more than that. Please just pray with me. I need sure. you to be okay. extra understanding in this time. This is real time, people. Just real ask, time processing. Asking questions. <laughs> um, and then in marriage, secrets. So this is, I'll say this with a hard stop. There's no place for secrets in marriage. Or in family life, yeah. I don't think. We just, we just, the word secret is just not used in our house. We do not have secrets. We have surprises. We don't have secrets. Semantics. Kids do not. We kept Mother's Day secrets from you, <laughs> even though you found out what surprises. they were. Surprises. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just I agree. There's no place. Yeah. There's no place for anything that should be kept only to me, right? But mm-hmm. but our sin, our sin, and our flesh, our default is to want to do that, right? We we are right. like at, we are not that far from Adam and Eve where we go and hide, and we don't want to be found. We hear the voice of the Lord, but we don't want to come clean, right? And He's drawing us out mm-hmm. to cover us, right? He's drawing us out to extend His grace uh, and for yeah. us to know that. Him. So. Now, let's get into this. What is oversharing in marriage? Yeah. Okay, we just said that privacy doesn't really have a place. (laughs) Secrets have no place in marriage. But there is oversharing, okay? And this is where it's going to get a little bit tougher to listen to, just for for young ears. Selena, why don't you read this passage uh, from Philippians 4, and then we'll, we'll talk through it from there. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Mm. Okay, so right off the gate, we have something that's a little bit counterintuitive, okay? So most times we read that passage and we say, yeah, just focus on the good stuff. Like, focus on the things of the Lord. <laughs> and I think that's a, an okay interpretation of that. But consider this, the first line. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, and whatever is honorable, and whatever is just, and whatever is pure... Hey, well, what happens if the thing that's true is not pure? What? For an exa- for example. Well, we're going to give a lot of those coming up. But okay. I'm, I'm, there's a dilemma Just there. Just putting the questions out there. So okay. it would seem, and we'll, we'll get through some of that. It would seem, though, that in this passage, Paul is commending things mm-hmm. okay, that reflect intrinsically. They make much of the character traits of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, So they, they're grounding indicators of whether or not something is actually worthy of expression. So again, think, think through that lens. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, God mm-hmm. is true. Whatever is honorable, God is honorable. Whatever is just, he is just. Whatever is pure, he is holy. Whatever is lovely, commendable, whatever, if there's any excellence, 
right? These all things, things worthy of praise. Who is worthy of praise more than our God mm-hmm. in heaven? Yeah. So it's not just, it, there is a certain kind of uh, underlying uh, uh, purpose for the expression. Yeah. And for Paul to be giving the Philippians this, this particular encouragement. And so I think that th- that helps us kind of get, gives us a grounding principle for things that would make much of God, like t- a true thing. So, because there are going to be cases where I have to, you know, if I'm bringing something to you, am I focusing on something that's impure if I'm bringing it to you as a confession hmm. or as a, because is the focus really that thing or the focus is rather turning away from that thing. Right. And right. so therefore I'm going to share this truth that has this kind of, um, is, is, is involved in something that's not pure the whole reason for confession is because something's not pure right so some of these filters a principle or first questions to kind of help filter through whether or not this is pure or this is something i should share or am i oversharing is does this edify my marriage yeah will it hurt us or it will actually make us stronger right and i mean i think the tension here would be well i'll feel better if i just get this off my chest yeah. But if I get this off my chest, how's that going to affect you? And then how, how will that affect us ultimately? Not that that should be the entire determining factor, whether or not we share, but it's something to be considerate about and not yeah. well, here's, acknowledge. Here's the caveat, huge caveat. And I know this is not what you're saying, but I want to make it clear for our viewers and listeners is that I could easily see a husband saying like, it would be way more painful for me to tell my wife I'm addicted to pornography mm. than to, for me to just deal with it by myself. So mm. therefore, I'm not going to overshare. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, yes, there is a sin. That yeah. sin needs to be confessed and dealt with. Mm-hmm. And your spouse needs to be involved in that process. A, because she's your helper. B, because you sinned against her directly. Mm-hmm. And C, because she's going to have a huge part to play in your sanctification through that. And D, maybe you need to deal with some of the, the real outcomes of that sin. Absolutely, the consequences. Like, sure. you've hurt your wife. You need to deal with her lovingly now and ask for forgiveness and walk through the path of forgiveness brushing it under the rug is not going to get that done right so you're saying we need to acknowledge that if you're dealing with pornography then you need to say that's what it is but when it becomes impure is when you start divulging details yes and that that's where that gets more into the the actual tangible examples which again this is generally speaking so uh, I just wanted to use that caveat, caveat because okay. we could easily hide behind this. Right. It will hurt my spouse. Therefore, I don't have to share it. Right. You know, there's but degrees of this. And that's and so, a, that's more of a peacekeeping attitude versus a peacemaking yeah. um, attitude of the heart, really, which Christ calls us to be yeah. peacemakers, not peacekeepers. And it's not scriptural. I mean, the scripture tells us to walk in the light. We right. need to confess the sin. Do we confess every detail of that sin? I think that's what we're talking about here today. Right. Okay, so here's some more filtering questions. Number two is, do I have to share for the health of our marriage moving forward and for healing? So again, um, if there's something you just got to get off off your chest to move forward, is that something that has to be gotten off your chest to move forward? Does your wife have to be the one to take, or your Mm. husband have to be the one to take that on? Right, right. The third filter, do you want to read that? Can my spouse or should my spouse bear this burden with me? Yeah, and... Some of the examples of like a first responder will mm-hmm. really um, bring that example to bear. This is a filter that you want to go through. Right. Uh, the fourth one is God knows. Um, he already knows the full depth of, of whatever you're dealing with, the full depth of the depravity mm-hmm. of it. Um, is he making it clear that my spouse should also know? Mm. And so I shared that example uh, of us, you know, years back. Um, that was a very clear example of our, our time when God made that clear to right. us. right. Um, and I say us because when I shared, you reciprocated, and that mm-hmm. was a very uh, profound experience of love yeah. in, in our marriage. And I would say it's one of the milestones of our well, marriage. Well, and I think that's something that <laughs> it begins to be, it's a result and an indicator. So when you were sharing, I wasn't getting all riled up and angry and frustrated that you were sharing these things. And in fact, it just caused me to like, Mm -hmm. want to share as well and to for us to kind of unify even more and so i think i don't know it's kind of a well in the holy spirit as you're taking steps what are what are you seeing around you and there will be some anger probably with confession of sin and that's okay that's supposed to happen but but it's uh, funny how we expect the holy spirit to be working unilaterally in those situations when he had been working in you right all the same and i didn't and you may not have detected it but you were in a place where you were ready to express right. love once again affirming you know, yeah yeah that and that was a work. god timing thing that wasn't you know something that i that yeah. we could have conjured yeah it was a god thing um okay so uh and just as a reminder our whole goal here is not to have secrets but to look 
to share things mm-hmm. with the goal of edification yeah. and strengthening the marriage and being yep. sanctified from sin, not just to divulge every every detail of mm-hmm. everything. So here's some examples. And this is where we're going to get a little bit more specific. We talked about pornography addiction. Mm-hmm. So imagine your spouse is addicted to pornography. In our experience, it's usually the husband. It's not always the husband by any means. It's And that is getting more and more uh, equalized. Yeah. Um, women are dealing with this as well. But however you find out, either you've discovered them, you caught them in it, or they've confessed it to you, how do you go about divulging and, and dealing with that sin without oversharing? Mm-hmm. So here's an appropriate maybe response is, I'm, I've struggled with lust. Here's how long it's been happening. Here's maybe a sense of the severity of it, meaning it's not just something that happened once a month, but it's maybe a weekly thing or a, a daily thing. Like you need to know the sense of s- severity of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm repenting of it. Please forgive me. Mm-hmm. I need help to walk away from this sin. Mm-hmm. That to me feels like a, an, an appropriate divulgence of details. Mm-hmm. Um, now, inappropriate would look, look like, and we've seen couples come up to us in conferences and we've spoken, and the pain on the wife's eyes as she's saying, I just, I can't get it out of my head. What has he looked at? Yeah. And so there's leads to questions like, well, what sorts of things are you into? Right. After your husband has just told you, like, okay, well, what sites were you visiting? Right. And sometimes I think as wives, you just feel ill-equipped, even as a human being, to deal with a confession like Mm -hmm. that, right? Like, sometimes we just feel ill-equipped. And we don't have to feel ill-equipped. First of all, we can go to God every day, be in prayer be in the word and god is constantly he's equipped us and so we we don't have to be caught on our heels with confession or repentance uh i think that the holy spirit can also i think when you know when we were dealing with it early on in our marriage being reminded that like i can't hold his sin against him and yes it hurts me so i need to be able to communicate that hurt um but how do i communicate it you know and not in a I don't want to condemn him, and I, I know that he feels guilty because clearly he's repenting of it, but I do want him to know that, yes, it hurts my feelings. It makes me feel like I'm not enough or I'm not uh, valued, you know, and that you have to go somewhere else. And so... So getting more detail around this, you know, the actual sin I think itself the mo- yeah. is probably not going to help you to that end right. of... of, of um, so focusing on what is true and what is pure, right, right? and not right. So you, we've sinned, or you've sinned, or one of us has sinned. We're coming together to deal with the sin. And if it was against you, for example, mm-hmm. pornography, or if it was against one of us, then we're we're asking for forgiveness. But we're focusing on the truth part of this: that it is mm-hmm. sin, but Christ has died, risen again, and He has covered it, and He has forgiven us. Yeah. So therefore, we can walk hand in hand out yeah. of this together. I want to be sensitive, though, because that does sound, that is the right answer, absolutely, but it can sound like a pat answer to a couple who's reeling from the pain of this, and they're thinking, I have prayed, and I don't feel right. that God is with us, and so that's maybe why we're here today is to remind you that he it's is. It's not going to happen feeling. in one day. <laughs> it will take time, and God is faithful, and keep walking. And now, here's another question. What if the wife just cannot get past it? Like, what is she to do? And so just some quick thoughts. It's usually rooted in pain. A lot of that, it's rooted in pain, it's rooted in security, it's mm-hmm. rooted in distrust. All that have been precipitated, or mm-hmm. in part, have been precipitated by this sin, or by mm-hmm. this revelation of mm-hmm. sin. It feels right in those instances to want to know those details, especially if, if you want to know yeah. it. It feels you right. Feel like I it can feels have, like you I have a justification. I should be able to ask you anything, and you should have to answer it. But here's the caveat. It doesn't mean it is right. Right. And it doesn't mean that it is pure. It doesn't mean that it is good and true it doesn't mean that it's divulging gonna give you any peace of mind and Mm -hmm. it's not gonna give it may not lead to peace and it may not lead to uh, a a, a willingness to forgive and a willingness to extend grace it might actually just root you deeper into bitterness so we're not gonna leave you there we're gonna leave you the tangible path out from that but first let's go through a few examples a few more examples excuse me Uh, what if there's an affair whether it's an emotional or physical okay so what's an appropriate divulgence of details Mm -hmm. in this case um, confession, of course, repentance. Hey, right. I, you know, the spouse needs to confess. I have sinned against you. I have had an extramarital, emotional, or physical affair. Um, I, I'm, I'm deeply sorry. Please forgive me. I need to turn from this and yeah. help me change from this. Well, and I did like what you said, understanding the severity, because I feel like that's kind of the gray part of yeah. how much do I share and how much do I not share. Well, a one-time emotional affair is still very hurtful. It is still wounding to your spouse right um something that has been going on longer i think 
has a different, may have oh, a deeper sure. and different effect. And so, yeah. again, knowing, I think, think the, the timeline. The marriage have been alive. I, yeah, I think than, the whole ti- a timeline yeah. uh, and, and not consistency, but uh, yeah, how consistent it happened or how. how yeah, because yeah, then you can start to actually deal with it for what it is. Right. Um, now, what would be an inappropriate response to this is, uh, you know, asking details. Well, you know, it's many times you might know who it was and that might be kind of a foregone conclusion. But you could say things like, well, what what exactly did you like or what exactly mm-hmm about this guy <laughs> was attractive to you right. how was he in, in bed like i'm sorry like yeah, a lot of are, a lot of men are, will have yeah. that question i've heard men ask those questions right. in real time as like well was he better than me like that is more of a jab than it is a sense of like i want to be reconciled with my wife mm-hmm. and there's legitimate pain being felt mm-hmm. in that case and we're not saying dismiss the pain and get over it. We're just saying that we need to stop some of these questions at the gate and turn that filter on and say, is this going to be edifying well, to and our relationship? At, and the time and place in person, right? And so if you're in counseling right. and you you have a third party there that is able to kind of navigate and facilitate. And referee. Yeah, yeah. a healthy yeah. way to, to have a conversation through these hard things. Mm-hmm. Um and you're allowed to vent there. Or you're allowed to cry and do all the things, which you're allowed to cry with your spouse and vent, of course. But I just think that it's important to know, to use that um, yeah. wisdom of who, what, where, when, and why. <laughs> yeah. So gen- generally, our rule of thumb for us and whenever we're talking to couples is you, you don't necessarily need to rehash the experience. And most often, it's not going to be fruitful to rehash any of the details of the right. experience. It's enough to know that sin happened. Mm-hmm. It's enough to know that I that I'm repenting of that mm-hmm. sin. Let's move on from it. Um, a lot of times, the, uh, the 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 deeper questions they don't really not deeper questions, but the more detailed questions can derail yeah. that process. Yep. Um, okay, so the the final example that we're going to give is this work related trauma. So we had alluded to this earlier. We have a good uh, I have a good we have a good friend who is a, a fire fireman, <laughs> He's a firefighter, and he sees some things. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you know anybody who's a police officer, yeah, who first is an responder. EMT, mm-hmm. first responder, who's been in the military. Yeah. I mean, some of the things these guys come back um, from, you know, battle zones, the things they've experienced, the things they've seen, the things they've done, mm-hmm. it, it's traumatizing. Mm-hmm. And so I can't imagine. So for instance, like we're a good friend of, of ours, John and Becca Lovell. I know John has seen battle many times, mm-hmm. and he specifically will not share details because he, he knows that it's not for his wife to carry those details. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, John, if you're watching this. Um, I, I think you've shared that with me in the past. But and it makes total sense mm-hmm. because women are not equipped, okay? They're not equipped to deal with war the same way men are equipped. They're just mm-hmm. they're not equipped for that. And, um, and, and, and the same way children are not equipped to deal with certain aspects of what it means to be an adult and deal with hard mm-hmm. situations. And that that would not necessarily be helpful for a a husband, even if he's dealing with severe PTSD, Mm -hmm. to come home and dump this, this is what I saw. I saw this horrific situation. I saw, uh, you know, a a child killed in front of her parents. I saw her parents burned alive. I saw, I mean, it gets dark. Mm -hmm. Um, And and dumping that on your spouse's shoulders, um, I, it's, you have to discern. Like, I think it's, it's, it warrants, this question of is this going to edify is this going to build up how do i process through this in the healthiest way possible and where do i find and support where do i go yeah. yeah where do i find support in that and somebody who will help yeah. help me go back to christ and help me to bring this to him daily yeah and thank god that we have a body of christ that is is ready and willing to serve yeah, yeah. Right? you have pastors that and you have other brothers in christ that have seen similar things and worked through similar struggles mm-hmm. um couples brothers and sisters in christ that have worked through whatever a trial a marriage might yeah. face and they've come through it and better for it in yeah. some cases mm-hmm. and they glorify god more because of it and they have seen the death they've been on that side of the death but they've also been on this side of the resurrection mm-hmm. after that mm-hmm. after that that death happens and that death being the death of trust or the death of whatever previous marriage you had mm-hmm. and so i think this this whole conversation is not to say here are the things that you can and cannot talk about like this is what oversharing is i think it's always going to come down to your discernment mm-hmm. as a couple in christ filled with the holy spirit surrounded by the body of christ Mm -hmm. asking these hard questions how can we move forward through this trauma being in scripture understanding god's instructions and word absolutely absolutely because i think there is 
there is truth, like you said. So we, you asked a question at the beginning here when we were reading um, in Philippians, and you said, what if something that is true is impure? Right. What do you do? And I think we have answered that, that even though something is true and it has happened, um, and if it is impure, then it's it, it may not be at the level that you need to share. Maybe go up one level of, again, this detail doesn't need to be shared, but here's the consistency of how much it happened or the reoccurrence of it or right. something like that. So, Yeah, and only you can discern through that. And I think if you're having trouble discerning through that, highly advise you to go to your pastor, yeah. go to somebody who has accountability over your very soul. Right. Well, and, and I guess and the motivation to too, right? Like, are you hiding or are you... Are you hiding as the person mm. who's in sin or are you policing yeah. the one who's been affected by the sin, right? So again, I mean, everybody's in question here for motivation. and Yeah, and so we can't possibly do a video that right. addresses all those scenarios. We just have to encourage you to go back to Scripture. Mm -hmm. Namely, we talked through uh, Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. Go back there and, yeah. and pray over that Scripture. God, what is true? What is good? What is pure? And how can I, how do I walk through that right. Like in this situation? Yeah. Um, and thankfully, like I said, we don't do that alone. We have uh, the body of Christ, but more than anything, we have Christ himself. We're mm. indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And if you're hearing us say that, and if that is foreign language to you, uh, we're here to tell you that that's the reality if you are in Christ. If mm. you have put your faith in Christ and said, Jesus, I am not enough to earn my way into heaven, my, to earn my way into being known and loved mm. by you mm -hmm. and to be forgiven by you, I need someone to, to step into my place. Christ has done that, mm -hmm. but he didn't stay dead. He rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He reigns on the throne even today, and he has sent his the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the the the, the third part of this triune mm -hmm. God, the mm -hmm. third person I should say, the triune God to indwell us, so that we can work through these hard things. So if all that sounds a little too good to be true, mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you it is true, and you can find out the details by going to thenewsisgood.com. We've set that site up just for you to get some um, information there and to find next steps. Uh, with that said, Selena, would you pray us out? Sure. Um, God, thank you that you are with us uh, and you're with the couples that are hearing and listening and seeing or watching this video. And I pray that uh, our feeble words and our feeble effort would be used for your glory. Holy Spirit, I pray that it would um, knock on doors of hearts mm -hmm. and marriages that might be struggling with things alone, God, that they would find wisdom, they'd find um, clarity, they'd find a path forward, a path out of sin mm -hmm. through you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, may we just be an encouragement to them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we love you, Lord. In your name, amen. 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 Um, just as a reminder, this podcast is possible because of our incredible patrons. So if you're still mm -hmm. watching this, then there's a chance that this podcast or this video is helping you. We would love it if you would pray and consider becoming a partner. Just go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. There are benefits. However, don't do it for that reason. Do it mm -hmm. because you want to see this message of the gospel proclaimed in the areas of marriage and family continue. We hope by God's grace to do it until he stops us and we will whether we want to or not so anyway that with that said this episode of fierce marriage is in the can we'll see you again in seven days until next time stay fierce mm, saucy you like that? <laughs>